Hi, I'm Lizardo Prieto and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the structural analysis technique when developing software. In structural analysis it's required you to have the function already implemented, right? So you need to have some knowledge about coding. Then the idea behind is to test all the possible paths execution paths that this function may have right so as you may remember we have black box texting where depending on the input values we expect some specific outputs but we don't have any knowledge about what's inside right but in this case this is more like a white box testing so in this case we know exactly what's inside of this function, right? The idea of this method is specifically test that we can cross all the paths and the behavior is the expected one. So the steps to take are first we must code the function Or method. The second step you have to create a graph for the previous code. I will show you how. Then you have to calculate McCabe complexity or cyclomatic complexity and it leads to the mm, estimated amount of paths that you have to test so you will have to code a test per path this is to test to prove that you can go through that path okay also you have to create some tests for the loops your code may have some loops while to while for okay so you have to test them as well There's also a technique to do so. We will see how to do it. Finally, you should code your tests and then check the code. This is to check the code against your tests and if you find some errors then correct the errors and repeat okay so let's start with the first different step this is how to create a graph okay Look, our code may contain sentences like int a equals 7, right? In this case, what we have to do is to number 
the different lines of execution. Okay, this is line number one. And then the corresponding graph production should be this one. Why? Because this line apparently will always um, be executed, right? If, if you are in a sequence and you don't have any kind of conditional, this line apparently is going to be executed, right? Then you can have the typical conditional. This is if some condition A then do something, right? Okay, to create a graph corresponding to this part, you have two number. Okay, first to check the conditional, then do something, and finally continue with execution of your code. So, how can you transform this into a graph? Okay, first you check the condition. If the condition is right, you go inside, and once the condition has been executed, continue with the code. But what happens if you don't get inside of the conditional? Then you directly jump to executing the rest of your code. Okay? Easy. Let's see more cases. Okay? What happens with an if A do something else do something else okay in this case we proceed exactly the same first second third well actually the third else is, is just the other option. So third, do something else and continue the, except the execution of, of the code, right? So in this case, we check the condition. If it's valid, we do something. Otherwise, we do something else. And in both cases, we continue the execution of our code. Okay. Right. But what happens if we have complex conditionals like A and B? Okay. Do something. Then in this case, okay, the number one is the first part of the conditional. Number two is the second part because we need to check B. Okay. Then the do something inside of the conditional and the rest of the execution. In this case, we start checking A. checking B, okay, and if both are valid, we go for 3, 3, this is do something, and finally we end, continue with the execution of our code. But in case A fails, okay, given that this is an AND, we directly jump outside the same happens with two. Okay. What happens with the or? So if A or B here is equivalent to this case. So we number 
the conditionals and the code that has to be done in case it works and the continuation so we start with the first conditional and in case it works we do something in case it doesn't work we check the second conditional if it works then we do something what happens if none of them work we continue the execution of the code and after doing something as well we continue with the execution of the code right the switch case conditional is quite similar and quite simple okay here we have the condition and all the different possibilities okay so for conditional everything is clear what happens with the loops well with the loops we can have for instance while conditional do something in this case again we start numbering the condition that triggers the loop the uh, body of the loop and the rest of the code that comes after the loop so here we go we check the condition and if it works we start looping okay until the condition is not fulfilled then we go outside we can have as well a typical do while the condition well here we need to close In this case and here we have the rest of our code in this case we simply traverse this line so first second the conditional and third the rest of the code so we simply start executing the do something then we check the condition if we need to loop we do it and otherwise we exit the loop and that's all those are the productions we need in order to build our graph the graph corresponding to our source code so let's go for a more complex example right let's define this public void a method And this method, if A and B, then do something. Else, if C. do something else and then we end the execution right. so let's number we can do it like this init 
end and then first second the conditionals third do something fourth the if with C fifth do something else okay after this end we should continue the execution of our code so let's create the graph corresponding to to this code okay so we start with the init and then this is like the thing that is here okay so before our code so we have init and then we go for one and then two okay if one and two are valid then we move to three and after three the code ends okay after this point this is another conditional so we simply go outside okay well otherwise we go to the conditional to these four else if c okay the same if b fails right <clears throat> then here if c is valid we have to execute number five and after five we end what happens if if c is, is not valid then we also end so what comes next we have our graph but we need to determine the tests that we need to create okay so to do so we need to calculate the McCabe McCabe cyclomatic complexity and the formula is given as number of links minus number of nodes plus two so it's all about counting right let's see links nodes links we have one two three four five six seven eight and nine and for nodes okay the ones that are gonna be truly executable are one two three four five and the one that collects the results so six this would be equal to nine minus six plus two so in this case we have five possible paths let's check it now we have to traverse this is an estimation of the paths so with this formula we can know a priori the amount of paths we will have to define this is the amount of tests that we will have to define to check the different execution options so first okay top down left right okay second third fourth and fifth okay those are the five paths we will have to check to do so we will need to play with the different values in order to be able to go through all the different possibilities okay with that we have the first part this is step number three okay this is step number three will be already completed right 
now we need to go for the loops and regarding the loops it has to do it has some similarities with the boundary values do you remember? it gives classes and boundary values ok, in this case we can have simple loops like this or this one chained loops this is a loop inside of another loop in that case we need to start the method I'm gonna tell you from the inner loop and then go with the outer loop or unstructured loops but that's a problem about the design the, the, the thing in that case would be to restructure the code to rewrite the code to avoid that kind of, of loop because you have a quality problem if you have this kind of unstructured loop so what's the method? the method, as I just told you, it has to do with the boundary values of the loop you should check the case where you don't get inside the loop so you don't fulfill the condition to get inside okay you should create a test where you get one time so you do one loop depending on the length of the, the upper value for the loop you should try as well the following this is two times the max iterations this is the upper boundary value for the loop if, if it has to loop 90 times then try 90 this max minus one it's like in the boundary values and equivalence classes you should try the boundaries and the following to the lower and the previous of the upper and then finally another case trying to get max plus one okay probably in this case you won't be able to to test this case without an error so because the loop is already pre-configured and it has the internal checking structure so you won't be able to do all the loopings plus one so well after having all these new cases you are already with this fourth step covered now the thing is to code all the tests you have found and then check that everything is working as expected so thank you for your attention please if you have any question send me an email you have the contact details up there or write me via telegram See you.